Welcome to Michael's Gifts and Stories. I have another bomb story for y'all, but before I begin, y'all hit that like button, that subscribe button, that share button, hit that notification bell so you know when I am dropping. Pass me around, pass me around Facebook, Instagram, and all other social media platforms, and y'all know how I feel about my chising. If you guys like to support the channel, cash shaft, dollar sign, Michael US. Also, check out my Spotify podcast, the 250 Gemstones Culture Podcast. Link is in the description. Y'all stay and watch the whole video. We need to talk. This is a story about Danielle Stewart. Oh, Danielle Stewart was loved in her community. Beautiful black woman, beautiful black woman. She had two kids and she loved them very much. Now, her and the father of her children, they didn't work out so much, but that didn't stop her from moving on with life and elevating herself. So, seeing as how she's a single mother, she went down to the workforce and she was really excited about starting her new job as a security guard. Oh yes, Miss Danielle Stewart, she wasn't afraid to stand up for the community. She wasn't afraid to stand up for what was right and protecting people. She took honor in it. So she filled out her application. She got hired and she was just ecstatic. She was absolutely happy. She got some money coming in. Her security job was paying way more than her previous job. So now that's a whole bunch of stress and pressure and weight that has been lifted off her shoulders. But the only thing that she didn't like was the amount of overtime. The pay scale, the hourly rate was good and they were giving overtime. She's making a lot of money, but it was taking time away from her children. So after she got hired, three Saturdays in a row, she had to cancel the trip with her children. They all planned to go to this big, beautiful park out there in Tacoma. So there's a big, beautiful park, and the kids been excited, been asking their mama, 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 when are you going to take us to the park? When are you going to take us to the park? So she canceled the first Saturday, then the second Saturday, and then she canceled the third Saturday because business was doing so good, and they needed people. Some people weren't showing up, or the more events were going on, they needed more security guards, so she had to cancel. But this particular Saturday that was coming up, she made absolutely sure that she'd get at least this one Saturday off so she can spend time with her children and her schedule was clear. So she got a new job. This upcoming Saturday, she will be able to spend time with her kids. Her mom was proud of her. Dad was proud of her. They were so happy to see her turn her life around. She really saw this security job, the security card job, this profession as a absolute blessing from God. She was so happy. Things were going good. Bills were getting paid. And then she could just spend Saturday with her kids. And she was, that was on top of the job being a blessing to her. She was actually even more blessed that she actually could just spend time with the church. She had it all planned out. She had it all planned out. We're going to do this. We're going to go to the park. I'm going to take them out to eat. I'm going to buy them a couple of outfits. I'm going to give them one pair of shoes. And we're just going to uh, go go home, watch a movie. She had a whole schedule of all the wonderful things and activities she wanted to do with her kids. Money's coming in. She got one Saturday off. She was excited. So one day, she goes to work and every it was just a typical day. Now, meanwhile, while she's at work, she's patrolling the building. She's patrolling the building. There's a army ranger well he used to be an army ranger and he was at this bar this ex-army ranger peter brooks he was at the bar acting a fool now before he went to the bar some things were going on at his house his wife he just found out that his wife had been cheating on him with one of his friends oh he was devastated he went into a fit of rage. He's throwing furniture, bam! He's yanking clothes out the closets. He's throwing dishes on the ground, breaking plates, breaking glass. He went into a fit of rage and she was scared. So he didn't put his hands on her. 
He just grabbed his belongings and he stormed out the house. Stormed out the house. It was an ugly scene. The wife had been cheating on him for about a year or so, a little over a year, with his best friend. He's calling up his best friend. Hey, 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 what's going on? What's going on, man? You messing with my wife? You messing with my goddamn wife? I'll kill your mom, 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 mom. He's just going off on his best friend. Best friend trying to deny it. But when, the, when Peter went through his wife's uh, phone, all the evidence was there. So the woman of his dreams, the woman that he really loved, was getting her back blown out by his best friend. So he said, I'm just going to go for a drink. I'm going to go to the bar. So at this bar, he already had this built up in him. The betrayal of his wife, the betrayal of his best friend. And he's at the bar. He started off mixing drinks, Jack and Coke. And then he just started taking straight shots. He started taking straight shots. He was taking this, sipping that first. And he, meanwhile, now, now he knew that he was a mean drunk, but he decided to drink anyway. He tried his best not to resort to drinking, but this was this was his his way out. This was his way to escape. So he's at the bar, started off with Jack and Coke. As time went on, he began to take, take straight shots. So the bartender told him to slow down, slow down. The bartender said, bartender's watching him. And now because the bartender is refusing the drinks, Peter is pissed off. Peter is pissed off. Peter's at the bar, and then about three, three seats over, there's another guy acting obnoxious. This guy was really obnoxious. Oh man, hey, last night. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me why. I mean, he's leaning on people. Tell me why. Tell me why, man. Why, why y'all love me so much? Tell me, just tell me why. I, I, I can take it. I can take. Oh, you can tell me why you hate me. I don't give a damn. I am feeling good about myself. This dude is really, really loud, and it was aggravating Peter. Peter's already drunk and frustrated about his situation. He can't get no more booze, and then this dude is over there. Just being loud and more loud and more loud. So Peter goes over to the guy and say, "Hey man, you 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 think you can tone it down a little bit? We all trying to enjoy ourselves, man. Like you were just over the top." And the guy said, "Who the f for you? Who the f for you? You better get the hell out of my face." And so that sent Peter into even more of a rage. And Peter said, I'm talking to you. I need you to shut your goddamn mouth, man. We all here trying to have a good time. I can't even hear myself freaking think over your loud ass voice. So what Peter didn't know, that drunk guy had a couple of buddies with him. So the couple of buddies stood up and they said, uh, what's the problem? And Peter said, you better get your homeboy, man. You need to chill out. So the, the obnoxious guy, the three guys, the obnoxious guy and his two friends, he said, no, I think you better chill out. And so Peter began to get loud. Right when Peter was a, about to get loud with them, the other guy punched him. One of the obnoxious friend's guys punched Peter right in his face. Bam! Hit Peter. Just like this. Hit Peter. Bam! Peter began to swing back because by him being an army ranger, it was his natural reflex. So Peter was putting in that work. These guys didn't know that he was trained. Peter was putting in that work. So they, they, bah, 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 they going on there, back and forth, back and forth. But they did get some, so because it's three of them, they did get some shots off on Peter. Because it was three of them, it's three men still. So Peter, he's bleeding from right here. And the other guys, they bleeding. And Peter, he just going like a wild animal. He said, come on, come on. So what happened is, it looked like Peter was about to go get his gun. He, Peter said, wait till I come back. So the, the bartender begins to call the police. The bartender calls the police and he tells y'all, y'all got to go. We got men in here fighting. Uh, the bartender gave the police the description and everything. And he told them guys, you got to go, you got to go. So the three guys, they ran out. And... P 
Peter began chasing him, began chasing him. Bam, 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 bam. He's chasing him. He's chasing him. So the two guys, they hit a left. The obnoxious guy and one friend, they hit him. As soon as they left the bar, they made an immediate left and darted out to, the, to their car. They ran to the building or near the building where Daniel Stewart was. Now, he ran on the side of the building, waiting until the coast is clear, and I guess to find a safe space, and then he's gonna call the obnoxious guy that was at the bar, and they're gonna mount up and then peel off. So the two, the obnoxious guy and a the friend, they make a left, the one single guy make a right. So they all disperse, so there's nobody out there by the time Peter go outside. So by the time Peter Brooks go outside, there's nobody out there, but he did see the one friend make a right. He know he's somewhere around this building and the only person that's out there is Daniel Stewart working as security guard. There's a bar and there's a building. So as she's patrolling the building, Peter Brooks is like, where is he? Where is he? He goes up to Danielle. Danielle don't, Danielle seen the guy, but that's not, as long as they're not coming inside the building, that's not her concern. He ran off somewhere. Because where the building and the bar is, is like near a creek and a little bit of woods, a little bit of woodsy where they at. So he sh he ran behind the building, he gone. Okay, she ain't thinking nothing of her alert is up, but he's gone. There's nobody out there. Peter, where is he? Where is he? I know he ran into that building. Peter believed he ran into the building. And she and and because her because of his intoxication, he, for some reason he believing that Daniel Stewart is protecting him somehow by not letting Peter inside the building. Peter believes that man is inside the building and Danielle Stewart, the security guard, he believes she's covering up. No, no, like, like you can't get in there. You can't get in there. Peter said, you better let me in there. You better let me in there. Peter's eyes begin to change colors. His voice began to change and Danielle began to get real nervous, but she had to hold down her demeanor. She had to show him that she's in control of the situation. She said, sir, I'm gonna need you to move away from this building or I'm gonna be forced to call the cops because there's nobody over here. This is a private building. You are gonna have to leave. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are gonna have to leave. You're not entering this building. He said, you're gonna let me into that building. You're gonna let me in that effing building right now. You understand me? And he's getting louder and his eyes are changing colors again. His eyes are changing colors. He's getting more aggressive and his voice began to change. You're going to let me in. You're going to let me into that building right now. And Danielle began to get very, very spooked now because he's not looking like a human anymore. He's looking like some type of a demonic creature. She started, she started getting chill bumps up her arm. You're going to let me into that building right now. Do you and understand me? If you don't move right now, I'm going to F you up. And, 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 at this moment, Danielle began to believe him, but she still had to show her dominance because she's a security guard. She was like, sir, you're not going. And before she can finish her sentence, Peter Brooks grabbed her and threw her on the ground. Mind you, Peter Brooks is 29. Miss Danielle Stewart's 41. He's a man. She's a woman. He's younger. And he has training. So he grabs Danielle Stewart. He grabs, uh, he grabs her and throws on the ground. And she and she yells up a uh, 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 yell, uh, and she yells down and he slams her on the ground. He didn't stop there. Remind, mind you, she's already terrified because his eyes are changing colors, and then his voice began to change. He said, "Didn't I tell you?" And he began to close fist, pommel at her face. Bam, bam, bam. In that moment. Danielle Stewart knew her life was in absolute danger. And he's hitting her and hitting her and hitting her. He said, didn't I tell you to let me in this building? And she tried her best to get away. She tried her best to get away. She managed to get a few feet from him. She managed to kick him off a little bit, but she just wasn't strong enough. And he pulled her back every time Danielle Stewart tried to get away. He pulled her right back 
into the position where he has complete dominance and he's slapping on her. Now he went from closed fist to open fist. He's just pummeling at her face, pummeling at her face, hitting her face. Her face was all bloody by now. Her face is already bloody, but that wasn't enough. Peter Brooks in the field of race, he's like, I'm gonna show you. I'm going to show you. He takes his car keys and put the keys in between his knuckles. He puts the keys in between his knuckles. Her face is already battered. And he takes the keys and continue to hit her, continue to hit her, continue to hit her. And she's yeah, she's a help. There's nobody out there. Dude, it, it, it was like her day has come. It was like it was her final moment. She, she goes from being outside, just patrolling the building, and at that very moment in time, and this attack took place for about five to ten minutes. There's nobody out there. There's no birds. There's no, it was just her and this demon-like figure. And he took the keys. He's pummeling. He's hitting her so much to begin to fracture the bones in her face, her teeth, her jaw. That wasn't enough. He chokes Danielle Stewart, chokes her, chokes her and chokes her and chokes her until she took her last breath. Peter Brooks snapped out of his trance, snapped out of his trance, and he didn't even realize what he had done. When he was doing it, he didn't even realize what was taking place until it was all over and done. And then he looked at the horrific scene and he, and he ran off. Peter Brooks took off to his car and jetted out. Remind you, the bartender had called the police. He left right before the police got there. Right before, two minutes before the police arrived from the bartender's call, her co-worker came out and she somebody finally heard the commotion and it was, and it was her co-worker. A co-worker comes out, a fellow security guard, and she saw the horrific scene. Danielle Stewart was unrecognizable. Her fellow security guard was a female. She let out a scream. Ah! Ah! Scream loud, loud. So loud that the people in the bar, they became to come out too. And they all saw Danielle Stewart laid out on the ground. Lifeless. Everyone's calling the police. Police are already coming, but they're calling more police. Is all this commotion going on? This was supposed to be a blessing. This security job is supposed to be a blessing. It was supposed to be a new beginning and it turned into a nightmare because of one man, Peter Brooks. This story is based on a true story and Peter Brooks' real name is Patrick Burns. Danielle Stewart's real name is Danielle Smith. This story took place in Tacoma, Washington where a former US Ranger went out on a night of drinking and went into a fit of rage and viciously beat an innocent security guard until the point to where she was unrecognizable. This job was supposed to be a blessing, but it turned out to be a curse. Do y'all believe in demons? Y'all flood my comments. Why do y'all think Patrick Burns committed this horrific act. 250 capital G, Michael Skisson Stories. I'm gone.